Hello everyone, I am Brianna and welcome to my channel. Today's video, I am going to show you inside of my essentials binder as well as the student binders. I've had some questions on how um, to set them up and how I did it. I'm going to have two students or two children in essentials this year and their binders are pretty similar except for maybe one or two things, but I wanted to show you inside of that. Um, I did a video of this last year and I kind of changed it up just a little bit. I consolidated things. I had so many binders and it was just kind of hard to keep track of. So let me go ahead. I'm going to flip you around and show you inside of these binders. All right, let's start with the binder that I take to community day each week and what I teach out of at home. Last year, I had this separated into multiple binders and it was just kind of difficult to keep track of things. And I went back to having everything all in one binder. It is heavy and it is big to lug around, but it was better for me to have everything together, especially in class. If I wanted to flip back a few weeks, I had it. What I did the first year of CC was I took this binder. Here, hold on, let me see. This binder, it is the IEW um, Teaching Writing Structure and Style. And I would take the week that we were on in Essentials and then put the week right in front of here. So I had the week in front of me as well as all of the things that I needed for IEW. I thought that was, you know, good and everything until the second year I found that I was kind of more um, involved is the wrong word, but just more uh, into learning and digging in a little bit deeper than I did the first year. And so having everything together so I can flip back was really helpful. So as we open up the binder, now the binder I have is a better binder and they are from Staples. And this is a three inch binder. So I keep our Trivium tables here in the front so that I can go ahead and just grab um, any of them that I need to look through. So I keep those in that pocket. Scooch this over. And then I have the charts right in front. And then we have the editing pages right after that. And then I have the sentences for each week. And I just tab these charts, editing, and sentences. And then when we get to the sentences, I have them all numbered by week. So then if I am looking for week 10, I just flip there and it gives me the sentences that we are going to be going over. So I have those in front. And then we keep going and I added this section and it is basically what CC, they give you these dividers and then each week what we're going to be going over in class. So um, we have all of the weeks and then it has the spelling, glossary, weekly sentences, analytical task sheets and then it goes into the student papers and these are the blank charts the editing that doesn't have any of the answers and then the analytical task sheet so i make copies of these and put them in the student binders so then this just made it really easy for me to have everything all together instead of having the blank student sheets in one binder, this information that we're going over week by week in class in another binder, and then um, these weekly sentences in a different binder. It was just, it was too much, you know, it was a good thought and I was happy with it at first, but then towards the end of the year, I knew that I had to change and switch it up. So that is the binder that I take to community day. So it's usually this one along with 
the IEW binder as well. Now let me show you the student binder. Now my son, this binder is going to be for my third tour student. He, this is his last year in essentials. We found that they liked the zipper binders and I just got these off of Amazon. I can link those below if you want to see them. But in here I keep pencils and dry erase markers. Now, usually some communities will have you keep dice and flashcards um, and things like that in the student binder. But in our community, our director gives each student all the materials that they'll need for class in like a zipper pouch. And then the tutor keeps that in a bin and just passes that out each week. So I feel like I don't need my sons to lug around playing cards or dice when I can have them here in the schoolroom when they need to grab them. So how I set up the student binder I did this last year and I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. So this one I actually didn't do last year. There was a printable on CC Connected that kind of had what they were going over and how many charts and the spelling and all of that. And I feel like I didn't use all of the information that was on there. So my thought this year was just to make a copy of that first page in my guide over that I just showed you and put them in their tabs for the week. So my plan is to keep the total of charts that they do each week because the tutor likes to know that. I will write the IEW lesson or lessons that we are doing that week. And then the math that we're on in CC for the memory work. And then anything extra that we're going to add in for language arts in this little box here. And then this kind of gives you a breakdown of what they're learning. So I thought, hey, why not try to use this? And then we flip to the IEW pages. So what I did is I cut the spiral binding off of the IEW writing book. And then I kind of cut down a little bit on the side and hole punched them. So now I have all of these pages separate from the book and separated by week and a piece of paper so that a couple pieces of paper so that they can write on them when they write their paper. And then after it's done, I will paper clip them together and then he's complete. Last year, I also printed out crossword puzzles or anything like that. And while he did use them, sometimes they didn't always get done. So my thought is, if he, he's in the mood for a crossword puzzle or a word search for the vocabulary words, then he can ask me or I can just kind of mention it and I'll print it out that week. So if we keep going, I did the same thing, copied here, put in the lesson that we're doing for IEW on week two, more paper, and then we have the vocabulary quiz. Now, these are kind of um, like, so these are not every week. It has in the back of your IEW book, the student book, it um, tells you when to give the quizzes. And so then after that certain week, that's where I put them in their binder. And then it's just the same all the way I did all of the weeks just the same way. <clears throat> and then, so when we get to math, I printed out the number knockout so that they have that in there to use. And I also did um, this one as well. I had printed out this from CC Connected. It's just kind of, it gives you like a little kind of a cheat sheet, you know, t talks about PEMDAS and just um, power squares and cubes, and then different symbols that they could use for note-taking if you just needs to kind of have an idea. 
And then we have the Faces of History packet. And then I put the analytical task sheet after that. And I put it in a page protector so that he can use a dry erase marker and do it that way. Now for his charts, I have these tabs and I put the chart in them um, that they will need to be copying. So I did that for all of the example here. I did it for all of the, the charts, all of the letters. And on this side, I have the chart and then this one's the blank and he can just write them in. Now I didn't put these in page protectors because he does not like it. His request last year was just to use a pencil, write it, and then just take this out and give it to me. Um, you can also, I'll show you my other student binder, how I did it for my other student because I asked his opinion and he said that he wanted it a different way. So I guess it's all just based on your student and how they they do it. Now, doing it the way that this, my, this son wants to do it, it does waste more paper and you have to print out enough charts for them to keep up with them. So that's the only downside about that. But with um, this student, this is going to be his first year and I have it set up the same exact way. I have his pencils and his dry erase markers, the same thing on each week. So I'm going to kind of flip to the back, put his analytical task sheet here. Now these were kind of some helps that were in the IEW student book. And I felt that I'm gonna keep them in this binder because he's new and we can go over those together. They're just from the appendix. And then the number knockout, and I didn't put the higher number, I think that was the prime one. I didn't put that in his because it's his first year and I didn't think he really needed that. Put this sheet here, and then we go into the charts, okay? And I left this one as A because it was just kind of a divider. But how it's broken up is each chart is in a page protector. I have the chart and then I have the blank and he's gonna take his dry erase marker and then write it all and then he'll erase it and then keep a tally of how many he's done. So I went ahead and just did that for all of the charts. And this way is actually, I mean, it's easier because you don't have to sit and make a ton of copies. They're just writing it, erasing it, writing it, erasing it. Um, my first son though, he can't <laughs> or didn't want to write that small and it was just too frustrating for him and he needed a pencil. So, you know, it's however your child is going to do it, that's how you should make their binder. You know, their binder should work for them. <clears throat> okay, so again, I don't have the dice or cards or anything in here because that is available for us in Community Day. Um, these binders are kind of fun because if you need to be on the go, it has, can you kind of see that? It has little dividers and you can put other work in there and then this binder can serve as an on-the-go school that you can take anywhere. Now for the vocabulary cards, I'm going to flip you back around and talk to you about how um, I go over these with the kids and where I store them. So these are the vocabulary words that are found in the back of the IEW student workbook. And since I cut the binding off of my book, I was able to free up those pages and I cut them all into individual flashcards. Now how I did this last year, I will show you my little basket. I got this basket at Target and it's, you know, small enough to just keep on the counter. And I kept everything from the CC flip book, these little flashcards to go through for memory work, 
you know, the math cards. And then this is how I kept my essentials vocabulary cards. So these were from last year and I just set them in this little card holder in the basket and they would pull them out and just kind of go through them. And um, I always keep the cards on the bookshelf over in the corner. Let me see if I can. So in this little um, three little drawer thing, that's where I keep the cards. And each week I will pull out the cards for the week. So it won't be this huge stack to begin with. It'll just be, let's see, lesson two. It'll maybe just look like this, just with a couple cards for them to look over. And then what these cards are, I took the vocabulary out of the EEL guide and wrote them on little flashcards so that they can go through, um, you know, present participle, past participle, what does complex mean? What is in a positive? Verb voice, verb linking. So they're just learning that sort of vocabulary as well. So that will help them with their EEL side. So that is what I keep in my, I'm not gonna put those ones in. That's what I keep in my little basket. This is actually downstairs in our dining room because it's easy access and they can just go in there and grab it and then go over their memory work and their vocabulary and their definitions and math and all of that. So that is what I do with the vocabulary cards. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know below and I would be happy to answer them for you. I hope it was helpful to see inside of those binders just to kind of get an idea of what to do especially if this is your first year, because I remember how I felt my first year. I had no idea how to set anything up, what I was doing or what to expect. So again, let me know if you have any questions and I will help you. Okay, I will see you all on the next video. Thank you, bye.